My name is Nick. Hey, I'm Yuri. You're watching Moon Tower HQ. And this week, we want to talk with you guys about Bitcoin and gold. Personally, myself, I definitely have an affinity for one versus the other. I have never owned physical gold myself, so you guys can kind of guess what the other might be in this case. But Yuri, um, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on holding Bitcoin versus gold? Yes, personally, I uh, owned gold just uh, a little bit uh, just to try it out and see, you know, what it feels like to own some uh, asset that actually holds value uh, a lot more longer term than uh, traditional fiat currencies. However, I got to know gold after I learned about Bitcoin. It is because of Bitcoin that I started learning a little bit more about gold and reading some Austrian economics uh, books and uh, learning how uh, gold played a huge role in uh, finance and economies uh, in the world uh, before fiat currencies came. So it was interesting to, uh, for me just to see uh, what it's all about and at the same time to see what it's like to hold gold, what it's like to transact a gold, what it's like to buy and sell gold versus uh, the same things in Bitcoin, right? At the end of the day, I never ended up holding any substantial amounts of gold uh, because uh, obviously to me who is Bitcoin born and raised, uh, Bitcoin is uh, light years ahead of uh, gold. It has certain properties of gold, but at the same time, it outpaces gold on many different levels in terms of, uh, in terms of storage, transactions, security, and stuff like that. Interesting. I think for myself personally, I would say that I'm in the same camp as well. I haven't gotten into gold really until I got into Bitcoin and understood what the concept of sound money and what the hardness of money actually entailed when it comes to the store of value, if you will, over the long period of time. For me personally, I think really the issue that I had with gold myself is the fact that it's actually, and some might disagree, but Dif more difficult to obtain than Bitcoin was at the very beginning. Now, people will say, oh, but you can open up a Robinhood account and, you know, you can buy gold and have it in your portfolio and diversify. But to that, I say, well, no, because that's not physical gold. That's just an IOU that you have sitting with an institution that then purports to deliver this to you if you're lucky. If you actually start to de dig a little deeper in and investigate to try to purchase real tangible gold, what you find out very quickly is that the prices are actually much higher than what the market rate is going at. And the reason being is because there is actually a limited amount of supply, which is what derives value to the asset class in general and also Bitcoin for that matter. So when I went and tried to acquire gold, for example, I had met with a lot of different obstacles and one of those obstacles outside of just being able to attain it is actually transportation. There's only a certain amount that you can transport with you comfortably after a certain weight, if you will, then it becomes quite a difficult endeavor to travel with it, for example, or if you wanted to move it from one safe location to another. And then of course the aspect of securing it. So that is why I personally favor Bitcoin is because it allows me to not only transport my wealth, but also be able to store it very securely in a form that is, well, doesn't take up any space whatsoever. Now, when we talk about who uses gold, clearly we are very good examples of the types of individuals that favor it. But Yuri, what do you think are some of the things that might hold other generations back for example, say the older generation um, before us from owning Bitcoin, and why do you think they would favor gold instead? Well, I think uh, primarily it's because of uh, familiarity and just the uh, notion of uh, having something tangible, something they can touch and smell, you know, uh, weigh in their head and, and see that it's actual, you know, it's real. Uh, that's the notion of uh, uh, tangibility that they are attached to, I think. And uh, uh, just simple familiarity because uh, Bitcoin is a very new thing. It's a completely digital asset, a new asset class. And uh, uh, for a lot of people, it's a 
quite a novelty, right? To us, we are quite open-minded and more acceptable of such ideas because our generation was raised uh, in the age of uh, information technology, right? In the age of the internet. So we are more uh, uh, accepting of uh, new ideas, especially the ideas that integrate in this digital age, uh, in this uh, new way of life that we're living right now. We, for us, it's quite natural that uh, this trend will only continue. More and more things will get digitalized. But the older generations uh, obviously are, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, attached to the analog world, right? And gold is essentially the analog version of uh, Bitcoin before Bitcoin existed. So uh, Bitcoin simply improves upon gold. It uses similar, uh, uh, similar uh, characteristics of gold, but at the same time improves upon it by uh, leveraging the technology of the internet itself. So, you know, uh, that's why I think uh, uh, it is quite difficult for uh, the older generations to understand it. And they just stick to what's familiar. Familiarity is the biggest drive in uh, people's behavior, right? And a lot of people have a hard time uh, switching to a different reality. So that's my opinion on why people are stuck on gold. And here's, here's an interesting question, perhaps, then. Would you think in the future, when the next generation after us comes about, that there is a potential for gold to no longer even be, well, valued? and Bitcoin really taking over the role of what gold has provided for the economy? Well, I think so, because uh, while uh, Bitcoin improves upon uh, gold, we can see that uh, its uh, monetary characteristics, that, that those of Bitcoin, they are much uh, more favorable towards uh, long term because gold is not really hard capped, right? And Bitcoin is hard capped at 21 million. Everybody knows the final amount and uh, we know exactly how much there is and how much there will be. Whereas gold still has inflation, right? Uh, so uh, if, uh, if suddenly there is uh, more demand for gold, there will be more uh, exploration missions and more, uh, you know, uh, not gold rushes like there were before, a uh, couple centuries ago, uh, one century ago, but there will be a lot more gold uh, dug out from the earth, right? At the same time, people already, people who see into the future, they already imagine scenarios where people go into space and start mining asteroids. And some of those asteroids are pure rocks of gold, right? Like trillions and trillions of tons of gold are just there out in the space. Imagine if one company pulls it off and decides to bring it all on earth. Obviously, the value of gold will crash and uh, uh, it's just uh, not going to be so precious as it was before. At the same time, we can see that, uh, you know, uh, central banks still hold on to it and uh, a lot of um, uh, countries actually started uh, either repatriating their gold from uh, foreign vaults or they simply started stockpiling gold examples are china and russia russia has been stockpiling gold for the past uh, several years like crazy and uh, as opposed to countries like canada where the gold reserves are literally at zero right now so that kind of tells us that uh, there is still interest in it and at the very least it's still considered one of those safe haven assets one of those uh, reserve assets that it's good to have on your balance sheet uh, in case, uh, you know, a global calamity comes around and there is a need for an economic reset and maybe the creation of a new currency. So in that case, gold is still on the table and uh, even uh, Bitcoin economists like uh, Safi Dinamous uh, argue that gold is probably still the biggest competitor to Bitcoin. Yeah, I would have to agree. And in particular with your notion of there being a hard cap on the Bitcoins in existence versus the availability of gold. Now, mind you, there are some counter arguments to the theory of gold availability in space of actually being able to bring it down onto the planet 
So it might actually exist in an ecosystem or an economy outside of this earth, maybe in the lower orbit or something along those lines. But regardless, I think the point still stands very much that there's still an availability of more to be produced. And Bitcoin, that's it. It's hard coded in. There's no way outside of creating a fork that you can actually increase that amount ever. So from that perspective, I think as a store of value, Bitcoin provides much more long-term applications for this particular aspect. So really what I predict might happen is that as the transition starts to become more and more ferocious, if you will, from a fiat-based economy to one that is more reliant on sound currency and hard, um, hard money such as Bitcoin, that you're going to see gold first be, if you will, priced in Bitcoin rather than priced in US dollars. So I think that might be the very first bridge. You already have a lot of uh, if you will, exchanges that are trading gold in BTC, but it's still based and tagged on a USD value, right? And what I'm talking about is specifically more of letting go of the USD peg and start trading in Bitcoin itself. So that becomes its own market. Right now you have Bitcoin being traded in USD and you have gold being traded in USD and you can kind of connect those pairs through the US dollar. But what I'm envisioning is that this transition might actually work where it separates away from the fiat currency for whatever reasons that might be hyperinflation some might assume but then there could be other reasons the point is is that then they will be valued as one to one with one another so one gram of gold will cost x amount of bitcoin and then that value from everything else that's where it will be deriving down to if you will so once that starts to i think formulate and transition itself you're going to see a lot more people that are going to really start to understand where the value proposition lies in Bitcoin versus gold. Because when you're dealing it in it as a monetary standard, right? And we spoke to this earlier, transmission, it becomes very difficult. If I wanted to actually pay for services in gold, okay, I could do that with my neighbor. I can perhaps do that with somebody down the road, but when I'm doing international business, forget about it. There's, there's no way that I feel confident with sending a nugget of gold in, in the U.S. mail or any other foreign types of carriers. So I feel way more, if you will, inclined to do it over a digital medium. Now, the one thing that I ponder, and this might be an, an interesting topic to kind of wrap this conversation up with, and that is gold itself seems to be intrinsically valuable to humans but why did it come around to be that way right sure if we can break it down and kind of do the elements of fungibility of transferability uh, as well as also kind of its ability to hold its form through time right not change a gram of gold 10 years ago is going to be a gram of gold today or a thousand years from now it doesn't decay unlike other metals uh, due to corrosion and everything else. But outside of that, do you think in human history, there might've been something else that drove people to value this really rare earth metal more than anything else? Well, honestly, um, I don't know. I think it's just a shiny rock and uh, it's a scarce shiny rock. Um, it's uh, actual use, for example, in electronics is quite limited. It's not that valuable in electronics. You know, yes, it is used, but it does not justify its uh, value uh, as, you know, uh, one of the most uh, precious metals, right? So uh, outside of uh, various uh, unproven theories, you know, conspiracy theories and other things like uh, uh, you could... Uh, uh, make uh, this magic bread from uh, gold that gives you some uh, supernatural intellectual powers and things like that. I think it was just uh, uh, what uh, people spontaneously agreed upon. And there is an economic term called the spontaneous order that is described quite well by, uh, uh, by Hayek, for example, that uh, basically states that people just tend to uh, self-organize uh, in a spontaneous manner around some simple concepts, right? And uh, that's, that's what I think happened. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, it's beautiful and shiny, it's rare, uh, it's universal. People can tell gold from not gold. 
you know, uh, with a simple test, you know, they can just bite on it. Uh, uh, you don't have to have exp expensive uh, equipment to say, uh, to tell gold from, um, you know, iron, for example. And uh, that's why it took off. Um, after that, of course, due to transportability problems and just uh, its bulkiness and, and uh, inconvenience, people had to resort to different ways of uh, transacting in gold by issuing paper receipts on gold, right? Which eventually led to the fiat money system that we have right now. Um, what's uh, more interesting to me is whether um, it would be possible today to stack gold on a recurring basis uh, if I wanted to, if gold became a reserve currency again and everybody started transacting in gold, right? Because again, uh, how would you uh, stack $50 of gold on a weekly basis, for example, right? It's not possible unless you still have some kind of a digital token uh, that represents that gold, essentially now you're you whereas the gold itself is stored in someone else's vault in a bank, right? So if gold were to come back as a uh, reserve currency, we would still pretty much return to the previous system. Uh, although that system could be improved upon, you know, it, it could be made a little more transparent uh, and with all kinds of uh, uh, checks and balances and uh, audits and transparency reports, things like that. But uh, definitely Bitcoin wins the race here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're so right. And then uh, through that motion, serendipitously, Bitcoin again comes the most favorable way of not only transacting, storing, but also investing over time and securing your wealth. So I really enjoyed that conversation. Thanks very much. And we'll join you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in and check out Muntaur.co.